So, continue. recording start. Okay, so now, now you are recording. Uh, very welcome everyone to our webinar about the Golden Cubes Awards. Uh, uh, my name is Susanne de Laval and I'm from Sweden and I'm co-director of this work program, Architecture and Children. And uh, I'm Heba Safedin from Egypt and I am the co-director of the Architecture and Children work program with Susan. And uh, we are very proud to host you all for today's seminar webinar and to celebrate four years of dedication and hard work to acknowledge the winners of this fourth cycle of Golden Cubes Awards. Um, uh, this UAA Architecture and Children Golden Cubes Awards were founded to honor people and organizations that help children and young people to understand architecture. Uh, entrants made submissions describing activities or products designed to teach children and young people to understand architectural design and the process by which our environment is formed. And we are following, an, <coughs> we are following a national uh, selection process. We have 29 countries that submit, submitted their nominations to an international jury in four categories schools, institutions, written media, and audiovisual media. We had 71 national best nominations were sent to UIA, and there were 27 entries in institutions category, 17 entries in school category, 15 entries in written media category, and 12 in the audio and visual category. Um, the international jury included uh, Jan Gehl, uh, architect, urban design consultant and founding partner of Gehl Architects. Uh, Saria Sidi, professor, pedagogic, uh, president of MC, Africa and Middle East Society for Ed Education Through Art. Stan Neumann, media specialist, director and writer from France. Uh, Mia Roth Serena, uh, architect, guest, UIA Architecture and Children Work Program. Uh, Susan De Laval, architect and co director of the program. And we also had Carolina Pizarro, who, who is architect and uh, member of the UIA Architecture and Children Work Program. And Nina Sava, who is also architecture architect and member of this UIA uh, work program. Uh, the jury met virtually on March uh, 26th um, and then uh, April 16th and April 17th uh, to evaluate the best national nominated entries and to select one in each category for an award. The jury also selected five additional entries for special mention. And uh, the jury was very impressed by the range of projects projects and products presented and the great work done by individuals and by organizations of all sizes from all over the world. The international jury has selected the following winners. And now we want you to be ready to make your presentations. So for the institutions uh, award, uh, the winner was Sweden. The project Expanding City, Yarfala Municipality, Yarfala Culture, uh, Anita Danielson and Ingrid Kennersted Bornhall. I'm sorry if I'm misspelling, mispronouncing your names. Um, the jury's comment uh, on the project was it is an ambitious project connecting school children, architects, planners, and the municipality in a fast growing suburban area. Through this interactive project, uh, children get the opportunity through practical projects to understand and participate in the urban development of their city. With the help of the municipality, the project is implemented in both school and leisure time. An expanding city, please start your presentation. Thank you. Hello, everybody, all around the world. It's nice to be here. Uh, we are very happy 
and very, very proud. It's an honor. Uh, my name is Agneta Danielsson and I work as Cultural Affairs Director. And my name is Ingrid Kennerstad-Bornhall and I work as a local government cultural officer. Järfälla uh, Kultur, where we work, is the cultural department of the municipality. One of our responsibilities is to enable children's participation in and access to culture both in school and in the leisure time. In projects uh, with architecture and children, our role is to be the overall organizer. Uh, the projects are a cooperation with local, regional and national institutions and actors. For example, Arktis, which is the National Center for Architecture and Design in Sweden, the County Museum and professional architects. We pick the best. Varfälla municipality outside the Swedish capital Stockholm is one of the fastest growing cities in Sweden. You can see construction sites everywhere. We build apartments, schools, preschools and playgrounds. And in the light of this, we think it's important to involve the children in Järfälla to influence the outcomes of the projects. So, how did it start? Well, it started 18 years ago with a project in a preschool. The children explored their environment and got interested in buildings, especially a house that was going to be teared down. They wanted to know more about how you build a house, what materials you use and so on. And then we started discussing how can we use the cultural environments in the municipality as a part of the schoolwork. Since then it has evolved to take in even more architecture. If you want to succeed with projects in schools, you must engage and inspire the teachers. Teachers are the key to it if a project, project is a success or not. An uninspired teacher is no fun. Therefore, we have gone on study trips, for example, to Arki in Finland together with teachers. We have had workshops where they build models. We have had guided tours in uh, areas in Järfälla that are going to be built. We have had meetings with all headmasters in Järfälla to tell them about the work. If they think that the work is important, they support their teachers and in the long run, the ch children. Uh, the military airfield in Barkaby in Järfälla was closed in 1994 and then used as a civil airfield until 2013. The same year, there was a national negotiation on housing and infrastructure. And for Järfälla, the agreement means that we will become a part of the underground network in Stockholm. And in return, we will build 14,000 new apartments and most of them on the former airfield. So the expansion gave us the opportunity to connect architectural courses to municipal planning. Educational projects in schools are financed with money from the municipality and the government through the Swedish Arts Council. The children learn about planning, material, model construction, and they discuss what architecture is. This is often in cooperation with, with museums and architects. Projects on holiday breaks can include building one's own tree hut with the help of an architect. They learn about the environment, ecological context, the right of public access, and the importance to protect the nature. Projects in their leisure time can also be to build models under the lead of an architect. The video doesn't have sound, huh? Don't you have a sound? No. It's, it's text all the time, so perhaps it works anyhow. Okay. Then we take yes with the text. Oh. Yeah.
just let it and mari mo mari mo ko do في 68 واحد من حوالين العالم لحد دلوقتي ده Hello, oh, sorry about the loss of the sound. We heard it here, but I hope you could um, understand and read the text. Yes, yes. We are following and it's very um, good. Readable. Thanks. So what's next for us? Well, a heart building camp for disabled children in August. Analysis of the impacts on young people when new schools and preschools are planned based on their own experiences. Children's hearings on architecture. Every year we gather young people to specific children hearings where they get to discuss and command different teams. Guidelines for architecture. In Sweden, traditional town and country planning is mainly a municipal responsibility. Next year, Jäfela will start work on a new comprehensive plan, which shows how we should develop over the next 15 years. The work involves developing guidelines for architecture, and now we discuss how children can be a part of the work. So what have we learned? Keep calm and carry on. Don't give up. You can reach the same goal with small steps. Collaborate with the best. We work with architects, with museums. We try to find people that complement our own knowledge. The mix of different professions and educations develop the projects and also our lust to work with the field. Be inspired by others. It is necessary to get inspiration from others. We got inspiration from Arki in Helsinki in Finland when we started 18 years ago. That made our starting point. We also have ongoing inspiration from Gothenburg here in Sweden, from their structured and engaged way to work with children and city planning. We also have had inspiration from seminars organized by, by Arkis on built environment education in, here in Sweden. And of course, it is a great inspiration to see all projects that is presented here in the Golden Cubes Awards. Have fun, and finally, and most important, listen to the children. And um, that is all uh, from us. Thank you. Thank you. And please stop sharing the screen. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. It, and you, you, you fixed the time also. Thank you very much for that. Um, uh, next is uh, also institution, a special mention for uh, Golden Cubes Awards. We had two winners. We had both Mexico and uh, United Kingdom. Uh, bad enough, uh, the Matt and Fiona from United Kingdom could not participate, but uh, Heba will present them a bit later. Uh, the Mexican uh, 
project was uh, tactile models for blind and visual impaired children. Regenera Espacio, Adriana Hernandez Sanchez and Christian de la, de la Torre Sanchez will present their project and the jury's comment was this is a sensitive project aimed at reaching blind and visually impaired children through tactile models and sound experiments. Children, children's awareness of architecture and the urban environment is developed. So would you please start your presentation and unmute yourself first of all. Hello, we are here. Uh, we are going to to press to open our presentation. Adriana, we are going to begin. Adriana. Hola, buenas buenas tardes. Este, vamos a hablar en algunas cosas en español y otras en inglés, pues con la finalidad de que bueno. después nosotros mostremos la presentación. ¿Y va con vos? Eh, muy contenta para participar el día de hoy en esta en esta premiación. Um, hello, we are uh, Regenera Espacio from Puebla, México, and we are going to present uh, the tactile model for blind and visually impaired children. And this is a work realized by Adriana Hernández, Cristian de la Torre, Luis Gerardo Córdoba, and Jesús Mejía. Uh, as my uh, Adriana said, we are going to speak in English and Spanish because the children uh, who collaborate in the project are going to list in the presentation later. Later, so uh, thanks, thank you, thank you. Uh, well, uh, in Mexico there are two more of two million of people with uh, visually impaired, and there are few elements for auxiliary <inaudible> communication, <inaudible> for auxiliary communication. Less of 20% people use uh, auxiliary elements for communicate for communicating, and most of the the 60% 60% don't use any technical assistance for autonomy and mobility. Uh, this is this happens in Mexico. Well, uh, in the in the tactile models uh, require a broader assessment of user. And the possibilities of mental construction of the objects depend on the pre existence or not of visual reference. So it's important to work uh, with this model, uh, not only the, the printing, it's also important to work in the education, in the sensibilization, and working. Uh, and working together with the school, with the schools of education for, 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 for children. Well, uh, Adriana. Y bueno, nosotros consideramos que las maquetas son una herramienta muy eficaz para la transmisión de múltiples conocimientos y conceptos. Uh, like Adriana said, uh, the, the models are a very effective tool for the, for the transmission of multiple knowledge and concept. It's a, a very interesting, it's a very important fact in the, in the work. Desde 2018, a través de una línea de investigación, nos pudimos involucrar con asociaciones para niños y adolescentes con ceguera y debilidad visual para la creación de herramientas alternativas para mejorar el aprendizaje de la movilidad y la comprensión espacial de los niveles a nivel urbano y arquitectónico. Uh, in the case of Abraham and me, we are professor at the Faculty of Architecture in local university and the origin of the project, it's in the university, it's the university. And there is a project with Regenera Espacio uh, of vinculation of social vinculation with another organization like a school for, for, for disabled children, uh, for example, layers uh, association uh, and since uh, 2018, the research lines of uh, has been involved with Association for Children and, Adult and Adolescents with Brightness and Visual Impairment uh, in the creation of alternative tools like the models, like the tactile models, to improve mobility learning and special understanding on the urban and architecture levels. The models where, where we have made two 
two types of models. Uh, the first is a model for, of, of all heritage buildings uh, that they are they were work uh, they were printed in collaboration with Fabla Puebla and local association in our city. And the urban model is a 19 block Cartesian map of the historic city center. It was printed by it was printed by the laboratory of technologies of 3D technologies of uni, of the university local of uni or university WAP. Uh, well, has, uh, has we, we are, you can say it's a project where they are collaborating uh, many institutions from Puebla. Nos hicieron dos modelos, uno eh, de un templo antiguo, de un barrio histórico y eh, una maqueta de 90 manzanas del centro histórico de la ciudad de Puebla y el objetivo del proyecto es difundir el patrimonio urbano y arquitectónico a personas con ceguera y debilidad visual mediante maquetas impresas con tecnología 3D. And the object, uh, the objective, Adriana? Ya lo comenté. Okay, thanks. Well, the objective of the project is to disseminate the urban and architectural heritage to people with brightness and visual impairment using this model in print in 3D technology. And well, it's a work that has been realized since 20, 20, 2018. In a first stage, the team received training from the layers association, especially in the in the terms of sensibilization. In a second stage, uh, we realized the architectural and urban surveys. Uh, after we began to make the models in different computer programs, in the next uh, stage, the printing of the model was realized uh, first in the Fab Lab. After later in the 3D technology lab, printing lab of WAP of university of local university. Uh, after we made the assembly, the, the material assembly. And the most important is the testing. Uh, first with uh, with with all uh, with uh, with others, uh, after with children. And you can see this is a project where the most important is the testing. It's because if we don't test or we don't know how how the children recite these models, well, the, the project is, is not complete. Uh, one of the main achievements of this project is the interinstitutional collaboration. We are, we are talking about the local university, WAP, or our university, uh, the Fab Lab, it's a laboratory. Uh, the Laboratory of Technologies 3D of, uh, of WAP, and the collaboration of many students uh, from programs like Scientific Summer Students of Mexican Academy, Science Me Mexican Academy, and CONACYT. And the most important is the involving of the, of the team with association of brain and visual impaired people, uh, also uh, the sensibilization of the technicians and the and the architect that it's a uh, it's a it's a very important situation that we must consider in next projects uh, and where we are going to see if we have more, i don't know if we have time we if we can press in a small video you have two minutes left okay thanks we are going to press in a small video Short video we're going to see. Let me. Set. I have to share the screen also. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it is, I, 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 I was with the PowerPoint presentation, but I let me admit, I, I didn't come, I didn't share the video. How, do you see the video? Yes, we can see. Oh, thanks. This is the first model of the old historic building. This is one of the tests realized in the layer schools.
Cristian, ¿podrían compartir el sonido? Sí, sí, ah. sí, el audio. En la barra de herramientas. Ok. Hay una función que es compartir sonido. Ok, thanks. Pero las dos de abajo son como curvas. Mira, aquí esto. Como media pelotita. Y aquí hay unas escaleras en el techo. A veces cuando las personas van a, como a limpiar o cosas así, pues se suben aquí al techo y luego por estas escaleritas llegan hasta arriba. Como el techo es de diferentes alturas, o sea, no es plano, tiene las escaleras. Y más acá enfrente, mira, más acá enfrente, están estas partes que si tocas, sientes el hueco, ahí es donde van las campanas. Todas hemos logrado, todas. Este tenía que cerrar. So something happened. The well, I think uh, if you will finish now because your ten minutes is up. Yes, thanks. And uh, well, we are uh, we are uh, we want to. Uh, We, queremos agradecer a todos. We, thanks, muchas gracias. And it's a great opportunity for presenting our works, the works of the Regenera and the University WAP. Thank you. And we were very impressed gracias. of your work. <laughs> Thank you very the much. Beauty. <laughs> the beauty was really impressed. Thank you very much. Yeah. So, uh, Maheba, you present yeah. <laughs> the uh, Our second special mention in the institution's uh, category went to the United Kingdom. Uh, Bill Matt and Fiona, Fiona McDonald and Matthew Springett. Um, uh, the jury's comment was an ambitious design project addressing a variety of issues and skills. Uh, children are challenged. They design, take decisions and build to learn. Uh, take responsibilities and achieve realistic long-term architecture objectives. Unfortunately, the team could not be present with us today. We send them all our warm greetings. And you, Susan, please go ahead. Okay, so now we are changing to the next category, which is schools. And the proud winner of schools was Egypt. And uh, the interactive school, Bena Habitat Community School. And the jury's comment was a reality-based project. It relies on the participation of the school community. Uh, it lifts children's environment in poor areas, especially the dropouts uh, from education in such vulner vulnerable areas. Children participate in the refurbishment of their own school using the available and the recycled material, creating a strong sense of belonging for the children in their school. So now we say, uh, please start your presentation. Rasha Emad LD. Are you yes. here? Yes, I'm here. Thank you Thank so you. much. Thank you. I'm going to share my screen. Uh, this is my screen and my voice is uh, well. Yes, we can hear you and see the screen. Hello, everyone. Uh, nice to meet uh, all of you. Nice to see this impressive uh, project. Our project is uh, Interactive Community Schools. Uh, we are uh, Bina Habitat. In this uh, presentation, I'm going to go through uh, uh, to present who is Bina Habitat, our concept of methodology, and our project, Interactive Community Schools. 
Uh, first of all, who is Bina Habitat? We are a group of, uh, of architecture and urban planner uh, builders uh, who have the passion to uh, share uh, the vernacular architecture and sustainable, and sustainable architecture. Uh, we aim to create uh, low cost uh, houses and to share uh, the awareness about how to use the natural materials to uh, build your house and to save the environment. Uh, our uh, work scope uh, focuses on urban development. We upgrade the rural uh, houses and we improve edu education environment in all two uh, rural uh, areas. Uh, we also build uh, houses using natural materials and we uh, use uh, 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 natural materials in furnishing uh, the houses. Uh, we uh, we build our uh, our. Uh, we now building our school uh, in the rural rural areas in Fayoum. Uh, I'm going to talk about it in uh, later in the presentations. Uh, our mission is to uh, is, is to improve the built environment, uh, share awareness, to build the capacity to create a sustainable human settlement uh, through environmental responsibility. Uh, our concept and methodology, uh, we uh, create an innovation uh, permit, uh, social permit. Uh, this uh, permit depends on uh, knowledge production, uh, capacity building, participatory project. We uh, translate uh, books, uh, uh, two books about uh, CEB and uh, community lead uh, projects uh, in, rural, uh, in urban areas. And we do a lot of experiment to develop uh, construction earth blocks, around earth, and battery bowl. Uh, we also uh, do a lot of workshop and training to uh, share the awareness about uh, sustainable architecture. One of these uh, workshops uh, focus on kids in the rural areas. We work with kids uh, to develop a toys uh, by using natural materials like uh, mud. Uh, and our participatory project consists of two projects, uh, rural house upgrade and interactive community school a project which I'm going to uh, present it uh, well in the next uh, slide. Uh, first of all, why we choose a school? Because a school is a uh, built environment that children in rural areas spend most of their time uh, there. Uh, children in the, in the rural areas uh, fit a lot of problems. They don't have any place to play. Uh, they don't have any place uh, uh, organized well to uh, learn as well. So we uh, go to build the school in the community school in rural areas in order to uh, improve the creative skills uh, in the children, uh, raise the awareness uh, about uh, the self hygiene and uh, by using educational games, we improve the, the, the school facilities by uh, building uh, with uh, natural materials, and we also uh, create a green spaces in this uh, school uh, in order to teach the kids how uh, they can see uh, and feel uh, the beauty. Uh, all of this is to develop uh, their skills and to uh, improve uh, their creative skills in their educational environment. Uh, our project activity mm -hmm. consists of six uh, uh, activity. Uh, built community classroom. We built a uh, classroom by using natural materials and earth, uh, earth uh, materials. We improve the school facilities by uh, establish a uh, uh, wastewater treatment unit. Uh, this wastewater we use it back in uh, creating a green green space in the school. Uh, and we create a green space by using uh, the kids' effort. Also, we create a playing areas by using upcycled uh, materials. Uh, all of these uh, activities uh, done uh, with the help of, of, of kids themselves. Uh, we create also an open learning spaces uh, by using natural materials like bamboo. Uh, uh, open learning spaces is very useful now because uh, after COVID-19, uh, the school is closed because it's not uh, suitable for, uh, for learning conditions in nowadays. So we create an open learning spaces to, uh, to not prevent uh, the kids from going to their schools. And we translate an awareness uh, guide uh, for the kids to uh, know more about their uh, self-hygiene and uh, food by, by using educational 
uh, our uh, our approach we work uh, socially by working in groups we uh, our workshop contain uh, kids and uh, local community uh, physical we fixing the facilities and systems of the existing community schools and uh, and building and new uh, community schools in the rural village uh, so we improve our uh, improve their surrounding environment improving the surrounding environment will uh, alternating the children behavior and uh, improve his habits brain and planning by using sustainable uh, interventions so we, kids now can be more motivated to be an influencers and in their uh, communities not on, not only as receivers uh, for the education and this is a uh, type of our project we uh, we improve man ahya community school in ayot we work on their uh, playing yard all this uh, Uh, play uh, games uh, done with uh, the kids. We also work in the beautiful school in Ayat. Uh, we work in Al uh, Aishim in Ramadan, an urban area in Omar ibn Khattab, Al Huray, and Osman ibn Affan. Uh, we uh, we have we done some work as well in uh, care uh, home for uh, for young girls. Uh, we do uh, a lot of workshop, uh, a, a lot of design workshops and. implementation with those uh, girls in the care care homes and we do a uh, open learning space using kampo and the wooden ballots in the uh, nursery in the settlement of Cairo and and the end of our project now we built an, uh, our own uh, community school in a village called Hablut in Tulum uh, this is a community school consisted of a lot of open learning spaces and a community plaza uh, this community plaza will work to gather all uh, the kids in it and gather also the community to involve in uh, the education process and involve in uh, designing or even what happened in the process uh, they go, are going to uh, gather in the work in the plaza uh, the school uh, we are going to build it from uh, natural materials by using a uh, tep plug and rounded earth and all the uh, playing uh, tools in this uh, school we are going to uh, implement it using upcycled um, um, that's our okay. team i hope they are going to present it today but they will not uh, i'm thanking all uh, of them for their great effort and thanking you for your time thank you thank, thank you so much was very very impressive and uh, the jury was also very impressed of your work so Thank now here by it's your presenting the next project so yes um one more um, winner at this time it's the special mention for the school category we have a special mention for peru floating community Kolehu Alef, the jury's comment was an enjoyable project-based learning approach. The project is holistic, based on the development of several technical and theoretical aspects, uh, as well as uh, creativity and understanding of uh, architecture as a multi-dimensional discipline. Uh, Michel Albanelli, please start your presentation. Thank you, thank you very much. And, and actually, I'm gonna share the screen and just wanna say that we are honored to be here and very, very happy to be able to share our, our project um, that is actually a collective production and also want to congratulate all the others colleagues and, and friends who have uh, taken part to the to the golden cubes award so um, floating community is a project about a community to design another community and it's a, also an experience of bringing bringing architecture into the school uh, i'm here on behalf of the colegio alef and specifically on behalf of the secondary uh, Uh, section, let's say, of the of the Colegio Alef and a class of students who are mostly connected in this moment together with us. So it's a, uh, I'm just bringing the voice of the project, but of course it's a big 
collective project. Um, just to give you a short introduction, uh, we are constantly wondering what is the aim of learning and how do we learn in the, in the school. Uh, we actually try to build a strong sense of community through learning. We wish to, wish to design learning experiences with a high cognitive demand, and we use investigation and research as the constant sort of method and way of proceeding uh, through different uh, fields of knowledge. So in this sort of uh, strategy or, or scheme, uh, um, we take the national curriculum and basically cross it tra transversally with all different disciplines. And as you've said, um, especially in the secondary level, we work as a sort of mix of uh, different um, educational philosophies like uh, project-based learning, but also design thinking. And we are very much inspired by the Reggio Emilia um, approach. To, to teaching. When we take this down to the, to the architecture field, that is our specific sort of uh, field of interest in this case, I just want to start with, a, with a, um, some words from Joseph Montagnola, who actually understands in the book, Niño de Arquitectura, the child in architecture, understand architecture and urbanism as cultural forms. So we do believe that bringing, bringing architecture into the school takes it to the sort of uh, zero degree, like the base to, to learn an understanding and uh, to be conscious basically of the role of our built environment. So what we did in this project is we took architecture, design and urbanism, and we put it at the center of a bigger and bigger sort of universe of, of fields of knowledge. Now, getting into the project, Floating Community is a research project tackled simultaneously from different fields, architecture, natural sciences, and social sciences, with the aim of going deeper into the, concepts, uh, the concept of living together and facing the questions and reflections that emerge through the process. The whole uh, experience who took actually uh, a whole academic year, and I'm trying to resume it in, in, in a few minutes. The whole experience started with a few questions, like it happens with all our, uh, our um, research or investigations. In this case, uh, with a group of students, we started, um, we built actually a conversation about Lima, especially, specifically. Uh, we want, we ask ourselves how was Lima before being Lima, and we try to wonder how it will be after. And so we got to the point that, of course, Lima is a very overpopulated city. It's a 10, 11 million uh, inhabitants city, very much expanded towards the, the mountains, let's say, the, the east, north, and south. And also we, we cross this idea together with the idea of the with the, with the evidence of the rising of the sea levels and being Lima a coastal city, of course, there are many areas which are in danger. So these sort of two evidences and that we studied brought, out to the, brought us to the point of saying, okay, what would happen if we might imagine Lima expanding towards the ocean? So basically we had a more specific question. And then we got to the, to the next question who, that was, how could we design Lima as a floating city then? And this question brings us to many, many specific aspects of design, like form or eventually floating devices, or how would we get energy or how would we move? So that's the point when design and an idea or a question um, makes like emerge uh, different kinds of need and we, we actually felt the need that we had to start collaborate with other specialists and professionals in the school, within the school. So that's where the, the project from being an, a sort of design, imaginary, utopian project starts to be a, a, a more um, complex project and has to do with natural sciences, technology, but also with social sciences. And we actually embrace complexity of the projects. We do 
uh, love complexity and and uh, and actually try to to get it at its most but also we try to deconstruct these complexities in parts and try to find strategies to organize to organize sorry uh, ideas um just to make a, a short break I, I will take this uh, phrase from couple of teachers of mine from the book Are We Human? Beatrice Colomina and Mark Vigley um, argue that design is the most human thing about us. Design is what actually makes the human. It is the basis of social life. So this complexity that a question about design brings into the school, it's absolutely welcome from us. And we take it as an opportunity to explore all different fields of knowledge and subjects. Um, processes uh, go through some hands-on parts, also uh, some other steps where we try to collectively uh, build the knowledge. So we take all our sort of arguments and bring it together in a sort of uh, system that makes us uh, able to, to bring the project to, to the next steps. And also, of course, we make research about references. That means who uh, could we read or, or look for that ask the same questions that you're asking ourselves, but before us? Um, entering into the evidences of the work, of course, we have design, we have sciences, we have math, we have many, many questions, and we have agreements because uh, the project. Uh, was done in group and uh, in different levels, meaning sometimes we work all together, but also we developed like specific projects with groups of five or six students that makes it easier to coordinate and organize and actually uh, enable to get different answers to the same question. So in this case, the answer of this group was specifically that they, they would start Lima as a floating city by designing a first sort of device that would have to get into the ocean and study how it will be living in the ocean before eventually making a city. So that, you know, like it problematizes even more the question, the original question. And then that is when design um, sort of reveal itself as a bridge between different cultural fields. This is another group, for example, they had to work the organization of the, of, the, of the project. They had to work with sciences, design, also prototyping with some bottles. Uh, they had to work geometry and agreements. And in this case, I, I very much enjoy to show this one because the group actually, when they, when they presented the project, one of the most important thing was that they had met at Alejandro's home uh, a Friday, uh, August the 30th. So that means that we are not only designing architecture, we are actually designing agreements. And that's probably the most important thing, meaning we have to organize, we have to negotiate, we have to take decision during a, a design process. And this is the learning, like the soft learning maybe that we will bring with ourselves for our own life. And the project went through some digital explorations, in this case with uh, Minecraft or Blender, and also with some physical models, prototyping, where you see like, it's very um, evident where, how the same question can bring to many different answers and all of them are actually uh, possible and interesting and, and useful to, to build the conversation and the learning. Uh, just to finish, uh, 30 seconds, we do understand architecture as a verb. We uh, believe that architecture allows a deeper understanding of life in community. Uh, we made an interdisciplinary project where architecture works as a bridge, a project that interweaves the concepts of city and citizenships, and a project made of questions, evidences, and reflections. Right now, we are constantly wondering and asking ourselves how to integrate design and architecture into the national school curriculum as a subject that embeds other subjects and also is able to connect uh, between disciplines and other subjects. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. <laughs> very much information, very short time. Thank you very, very much. 
so now uh, the next uh, project that we are going to hear about is uh, uh, the the written media uh, uh, so uh, the winner of written media is Hungary and urbanity culture active Gjerselet in Budapest. And the jury's comment was a large scale game based on NJ engaging group activities and created primarily for teenagers in a dialogue based street board game on urban, urban phenomena. The game is meant to increase awareness of the complexity of town planning, architecture and civic culture. The interesting aspect about the game is its flexibility to address various urban aspects. Uh, so we really thought this was very exciting and Anna Shigali Naji will please start your presentation. Thank you so much for having me here and uh, also special greetings to Christina and Esther. Uh, I'm Anna. Uh, it's easier to pronounce. <laughs> I'm the leader of the um, project Urbanity and the president of the NGO Culture Active, where we um, bring together children and adults to make their neighborhoods lovable. And um, if you've been to a public forum, you know that shaping cities together is not an easy stuff. Uh, there is a lot of stress involved, a lot of conflict, and you do not see any young people around. Um, so yet we believe at Culture Active that shaping our neighborhoods can be joyful and a positive experience in which young people have their own role. And we work to acquire those competencies that uh, needed to participate uh, in shaping the city. And we do it so uh, through playful experiences and methods. Um, the life board games, the city walk, summer camp, city guides, um, creative workshops and planning activities make this learning experience rich and uh, positive. And uh, these are the activities through which uh, children can get to know their place of residence and those who live in it. And they get to understand how the city works and recognize their own needs and the needs of the others and they also discover how they can shape the city. So we consider ourselves as an innovative team, um, an innovative lab, where we develop all these playful uh, methods and tools. And we have an enthusiastic team of 30 volunteers, mostly teachers and architects, uh, but we are an interdisciplinary team. And so we have 16 profession present uh, altogether. So we are also proud that we work and involve uh, 14 volunteers annually into these activities. And so now we are exist for 10 years now. And during these 10 years, uh, we were very proud uh, to involve young people from uh, kindergarten till the university. And this special project that we are talking about targets the teenagers. So we also worked with uh, 100,000 children now, um, also including adults. And we published 11 city guidebooks that um, were distributed for 30,000 copies. So I think these activities shows that we can be proud of something. And now we, our proudest moment is uh, the Golden Cubes Award, um, which we won with one of our uh, live board game. We have four of them. So. That's a great news for us and special thanks to Esther who's here, uh, Esther Tooth, who founded the NGO and uh, she made it so successful and encouraged us to apply with this game for the award. So finally, what is this award winner uh, game Urbanity about? Um, so Urbanity is a dialogue based game uh, in which players formulate opinion about uh, the everyday urban issues. And it has two versions, as you can see on the top. It is um, the one that is used for the streets and public spaces, and the other at the bottom, uh, which is adapted to the school context. And uh, in the school version of the game, uh, young people discuss uh, changes that may affect their own environment. So at this moment, I would like to ask you to imagine that you are one of these kids 
who plays this game called urbanity. So, are you with me? Be a kid. So you hear now the bell, gling, 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 gling. The lunch break is over. Uh, it is time to go back to the history class. And your teacher waits for you and announces that today you are not going to uh, learn something specific, but you are going to play a game. And this is interesting, you think? Um, so she creates teams of three and you get to work together with uh, two of your best friends. And um, so you are asked to uh, create a, a question for the game. Um, so you are asked to select your favorite place around the school that you know well, and you decide to match it with a small scale intervention idea from a pre-made card set. Once everyone is done, the game starts. You are in the starting team and you can't wait to read your question um, to the others because you got really fascinated about the idea of playing table tennis in the bus stop in front of your school. You think this is the best idea ever, and so you read it out loud. Would you put table tennis table in the bus stop? You hear your teacher starts to count three. Three, two, one. So, and you see that your fellow classmates run to take their positions left and right in the classroom, marking agreement and disagreement with this question. And you're very surprised to see that most of them are standing on the no uh, part and on the no side. Why, you wonder. And then this time you turn to your um, fellow uh, team members and you ask the same, but they are also surprised. They do not understand. And this is the moment when the debate starts. So the rules of the, uh, the games are simple for debate and there is no um, um, good or uh, wrong question or answer, every opinion counts, and um, your fellow classmates start to say pros and cons about the table tennis idea in the bus stop. As they debate, you see that every person who talks receives a colorful score, these triangles, and they collect it uh, individually, but they place it on their, play, um, their team fields. And you know uh, that the goal of the game is to collect as many opinions as possible, but this is not enough to win the game. Um, based on the content of the arguments, your classmates receive points of different colors. Uh, when they tell you that the bus driver um, has a safety issue because um, the table tennis ball might fall on the street when he drives there uh, to park at the bus stop, um, then your classmates receive a red score because they consider the perspective of the bus driver. And another argument gets a yellow score, seemingly because it raised the question of maintenance and how play equipment would be organized on the side. And then you see that the green is for sustainability aspects, blue goes for the aesthetics of the space. And you wonder how hard it is to think about all of these different aspects. But your classmates do a good job because they get bonus points for thinking divers. And this moment, they, there are no arguments anymore. And finally, you and your team get the chance to state, to state and protect your position and address what you heard from the others. So while you start arguing that your idea was the best ever and um, um, because you can entertain yourself while you are waiting at the bus stop, you realize that there is no other um, argument that could support this position. So at this point, um, one of your team member jumps in and reminds you that uh, someone mentioned something about um, tic-tac-toe. So at the end, your team decide to forget about the table tennis idea and you propose to create a bus shelter in a bus stop so it's not only gives shelter from the rain and uh, sunshine, but you can play tic-tac-toe on one side of the bus stop. So this is your decision. Decision You made it, you got your scores, you put it on your playing field and you feel satisfied with this idea. And now comes the next team with the next question. So I hope you got a taste of the game and how we use it in the classroom. 
And in the school, uh, we like to play this game with children between ages uh, between 14 and 18. And we recommend using the game during the lectures and also in special cases like project days. So the strong point of the game is that it facilitates critical thinking in a very specific topic that is not present in the school curricula and children learn about the operation of their city and, the, and their influence on the, on the environment. And the game uh, suits uh, several school subjects as well, because children can learn many different skills and competencies during this game. Um, and they also confirm these learnings um, um, through some testimonials. So children said that they were happy to share their opinions. They really liked that everyone got involved and uh, that uh, even the shyest people could talk. They said that they were surprised to see the complexity behind seemingly simple questions and that they felt empowered after the gameplay to do something for their city. So, but this is actually not only true for the school environment because you can use this game in other contexts as well. Um, where you need to discuss urban issues. So, because not only school children um, find the game exciting, family members, experts, decision makers, and civilians also enjoy the game full opinion forming. And it seems to be a long list of urban issues that you can address uh, and discuss. Uh, this is shown by the three examples here on the, uh, on the slide, uh, where I brought you the three um, adapted versions of the game, each of them discussing different topics, how to make the city greener, how to become a minimalist citizen and what to do to protect or develop the local heritage. So finally, to show what we achieved with the game, um, since 2015, uh, we de developed the game together with more than 25 volunteers. So we have 25 designers, actually. Um, we facilitated the 60 plus um, game events on festivals, conferences, and in schools. And we played with uh, 550 school students and 700 community members. So we aim to share this knowledge through the blogs, articles, and studies, and uh, to bring it to community design uh, and planning projects. So with this one, um, I would like to thank you for your attention. And I believe that uh, winning this first prize on the Golden Cubes Award will fuel our passion further and bring many new experiences for the children and adults. Thank you for your attention. Thank Hi. you. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> it was exciting. <laughs> uh, now uh, we go to another uh, written media special mention award from Egypt this time, an architect's monopoly by handover projects. Uh, the jury comment was a strategic board game which presents an innovative way of introducing multiple architectural aspects, including the UN 17 SDGs to children. The game also emphasizes the importance of the built heritage. Uh, Mariam, Radwa, please start your presentation. You forgot to mention that this was a, an Egyptian <laughs> yes. uh, special mention. <laughs> so proud for that. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, everyone. I'm very happy to be here. Actually, I'm honored. I'm Mariam Benewi, the architect and the game developer for the Architects Monopoly. Uh, I'm going to start sharing the screen now. Please go ahead. Okay. So, um, I did this game for Handover, which um, is a, an architectural company that I'm going to introduce you to what they do and um, what they believe in. And then we're gonna go through with the, discussing the game. Uh, hopefully we're gonna do this quite uh, briefly. So Handover is uh, an, a design built company that specializes in using environmental friendly and cost efficient materials, usually available in every local market. Uh, also providing better uh, environmental or like thermal solutions for the buildings. 
uh, usually they tackle uh, points or the issues that they have to deal with are the prices of the raw materials, how they're very increase, uh, rapidly increasing, negative contribution to the construction sector uh, on the environment, and also the lack of human-centric designs and thermal insulation for the buildings. Uh, their building methodology usually depends on the earth construction and methodology, which is usually the, the oldest building technique uh, known to man. Um, the very common practices they use is the round earth techniques, stones and compressed earth blocks and adobe. Um, they, it's like usually they rarely use any cement or any environmental um, like harmful materials. So they're, they try to be very friendly to the environment. Um, they do various projects, starting from residential uh, projects like the Luxor Housing and Kiwa Farmhouse, uh, also public spaces and community centers like this uh, community center in uh, St. Catherine, Egypt, and also uh, Elayat Community School. Um, also, um, we, uh, the company also does um, uh, educational workshops that teaches other people, you don't have to be an architect to be interested in learning about this field. So they, uh, they provide, provide that too in various, very successful workshops. So I'm going now to start talking about the game. An Architects Monopoly um, is a very simple and friendly game that all the family members can enjoy. You don't need to be um, like uh, to a certain age, as long as you can understand it. So let's say the starting age it would be eight till you're 99. You can, enjoy it. Uh, it introduces everyone to or opens a window to the architectural world where you can educate the players more about architecture, terms like sustainability uh, and also site management. And it tries to contribute or like shed a light on how architecture can be very influent, uh, influ influential. <laughs> like it has a very huge impact on SDG goals and to all humanity. <laughs> so what we aim uh, for the users to come out or have um, the experience that they should enjoy or come out with the learning outputs is that they could understand more about uh, very iconic uh, architectural buildings and why they're considered iconic because usually the masses hear about a very uh, interesting building but they never know uh, why it's considered iconic at least from the architect's point of view. Uh, also, they get to experience an almost real life experience of how uh, a project is implemented, starting from a design phase to the construction. And they get to learn more about the keywords such as sustainability, environmental friendly methods, and also learn about the, the idea of how materiality contributes to this point. Uh, so usually, in the end, we, what we like to do is help the children or the users make a very conscious, conscious decision when they come to using environmental or like using materials while building their own project in the game. So how do we play it? Which is obviously, I guess, everyone wants to know. Um, the design phase first, every player gets to pick a card from the building deck, which are um, usually buildings that are chosen for a very specific reason because each building has a, a unique aspect that contributes again to how they can be, contribute to the community or the environment, uh, or they have a very unique way of uh, design. So starting from something like the, the Great Mosque of Dijani, how the community uh, like celebrates it and has to uh, do a festival and reconstruct it every year, something like the Pixel where they use plastic materials and just uh, built a huge building with it. So it offers the idea that there is no one road you need to take just to achieve sustainability. Um, also, the, the, the cards have a very small description about the building. And uh, the very important part is it has the amount of materials that the players need to collect so they can uh, build their building. So once you get your building or design, you get your building pad, which is basically your site that you build on. Um, then at this point, uh, the player has a certain amount of actions that he can do per rule. You only have two actions. Uh, you can either uh, take a card from the material deck or the lucky deck, uh, sell a material or trade it with another uh, player, or you can upload your material to a transportation method so it can go to the site. Um, these are mostly the actions you can do. Also, once you start getting on with your project, you receive a budget. Usually this budget or the amount of money you get is a little bit uh, less than the actual price you can afford to buy the materials for your building with. So this is how you earn the extra monies through trading 
or um, uh, you can either win uh, something or you can like apply a fee for every player so you get more money. This is so there's always a back and forth between players, uh, an action happening between them to help them uh, take more experience on how they deal with the market and the project usually, how we do it. Also the transportation. There are various transportation methods starting from a train, a boat or trucks and lorries with different spots, like uh, a train can have six spots, a lorry can have two spots that you can ship or add uh, your material on. So you can ship it to the site. And this also makes them consider time and money because uh, sometimes if you ship it on a train, you have to wait for a certain amount of, ro of rolls so you can use it again. Unlike the trolley, you can use it very fast or very, uh, but you can't ship a lot of products. So you get to think and manage your resources on how to put where, when. So it's kind of interesting how they get to think a lot about how they manage the resources, time and money, uh, kind of like how we do it in actual in the actual real life. Uh, also, how do we um, highlight or uh, shed a light on sustainability and SGD uh, goals in the game? For example, uh, if you have um, a building that is used through round earth material or earth construction, usually in real life, you actually don't get to buy a lot of material because you built from the site. So once they get this building, they get a, a free uh, material card so that they, they don't need to play for it or buy it. They actually get it for free. So it's like the kids or the person using it, oh, I'd like to have that building or they'll do an extra effort to get that one because this project like facilitates something more. Or uh, for example, uh, you get points for getting um, a project that uh, celebrates the community or a project that has an environmental uh, aspect of it. So there's always points, there's always something that makes you want to, or like uh, highlight the buildings that have specific aspects that we want them to pay attention to. Okay, so how to win? Uh, all you need to do is finish your project before everyone else does. And if you couldn't, you could try to make the other ones lose by like uh, jamming their traffic or trying to apply a certain card that would block their road or apply a fee to them or make them run out of resources and money. Because if you leave uh, your blocks or materials on a um, transportation method and you don't ship it in time, you get to lose the you get to lose the material and you have to do it all over again. So it's kind of uh, you can actually if you can't win, you can make them lose. And also, if all the elves are against you and you couldn't do either, you can simply try to gain more points in regards to because in the lucky cards, there are some challenges if you do them, which also contribute to the whole uh, idea of sustainability. If you do this challenge, then you get an extra point. And if you couldn't do either or all of these, then at least you can have fun playing the game. Um, so that was uh, a brief and a very fast uh, Summary for the game. So I would also like to thank uh, Radwa Rustum, who's the CEO of Hanover, for giving me this opportunity, and Bessam Ashraf and Noor Hiryani uh, for their support, or they were my supporting team members. And yep, that's about it. Thank you. And... Thank you. Thank you <laughs> very much. <laughs> <laughs> I know I talked too fast, but I tried to yeah, keep the time. Yeah. You, you, you kept the time very well. And <laughs> And uh, we had some in the chat, some people for both games that were very impressed and would like to, to play both yeah. your game yeah, more than <laughs> and the Hungarian game. <laughs> so I think it was really something people would enjoy to use. So now uh, we are moving to uh, audiovisual media. So we have some... Uh, presentation from Denmark. Yes, I'm here. Uh, yeah, that's very good. Uh, and the audiovisual media, the winner was Denmark and uh, the project was The Sound of My City and it's Frederiksberg Library in, Den in Copenhagen uh, that uh, was the winner. And the jury's comment was an original and inspiring inspiring installation to introduce children to, to architecture uh, and the city, focusing on the experience of sound in relation to space and built environments. The project interacts with the local context of outdoor and indoor spaces to explore places, identities and soundscapes. So 
Ingeborg Ockels, you are now welcome to make your presentation. Thank you so much. And, and I want to say thank you so much for being a part of this wonderful and very exciting project. I'm very, very honored. Um, thank you so much. Okay, the name of the project was The Sound of My City. And uh, in this project, there is a focus and, on sound and space and how these two things work together. And um, the goal was to learn kids and young people uh, about working with sound and space in the city they lived in. So this is about sound awareness in the city and how different soundscapes, uh, sound places, uh, affects uh, young people and uh, talking about sound environment uh, for uh, more it's not only about noise and silence it's much more about mood and experience and starting to work with sound experience as a kind of texture you can actually work with and mold uh, through composition through building blocks like in architecture um, so the main questions in this project uh, is what does it sound like living here in this city for you? What sounds are there and how do they, they affect uh, your mood and your well-being and how can we uh, create something with these sounds that sort of reflect these different, this way of this experience? Um, here at, at Frederiksberg, that is a place in Copenhagen called Frederiksberg, uh, outside the library, uh, there is a square called Solbia Square, and it's 3,000 uh, um, uh, um, square uh, meters, it's quite big, and in this square is dug 32 sound wells with the with a loudspeaker in each of them so this is actually this space is actually a gigantic multi-channel uh, multi sound platform that you can work with and the idea was to uh, create a, a project and workshop for uh, kids to sort of experience what is it like to uh, play around with sound in this a gigantic <laughs> space and sort of be able to work with what what sound moving and sounds are recognized building soundscapes um, reflecting uh, the life of this uh, sound this square in the city um, this is uh, this was part of a project uh, uh, an artist in residence uh, I had I'm this sorry I'm the sound artist Ingeborg August, and uh, I had an artist in residence there um, at the library of Frederiksberg. And the uh, goal was exactly uh, children, sound, space, and identity. What is it like to live here? And if you should create another sound space that sort of reflects your way of looking at this space, what would it sound like? So what does my city sound like? And the main question of the question we started with was like, imagine that this square has a soul, is a person. What would it be like? <laughs> what would it sound like? What is the sound experience being this square? People walking over you, maybe a dog biking, uh, barking, um, people sitting down talking, uh, sun shining, rain falling. And then we moved on and, uh, and expanded this idea to their school, the children's schools. What does it sound like being in this school, the sound experience of this school and into the Metro, which is just near the square. And there's also a big a mall near the square. So we have all these different kinds of architecture and houses just close to the square that sort of has its own sound identity and uh, creating different sound spaces for these uh, children. So I worked with three uh, fifth graders, uh, fifth grade classes, 
And we first started with some listening uh, exercises where I'd recorded different places at Frederiksberg. And then they had to guess, what do I hear? Where did you go to record this? And then they had to explain exactly why they thought this was the place I'd been to record. So in that way, this was a way of sort of heightening their sound awareness and how sound works and create identity of a place and a space. And the next phase was uh, to give them a sound recording uh, kits, um, audio recorders, and uh, also iPads with sound recording uh, systems on it, um, like GarageBand, for example, where you can record and compose sounds. And then we sent each class out on diff in different areas of the square. Um, some of them had the square, main square as their area. And there was a lot of uh, uh, work going on there and a lot of nice uh, industrial work and a lot of uh, uh, noisy stuff going on there. And then some of them had the library area, which was the contrast. <laughs> so what sounds does the library sort of represent here? And how, what is it like being a kid in this library area? And then some of them were down in the metro recording different sounds and sort of, um, uh, sort of uh, trying to get a sense of what is the soundscape here? What does it feel like? What is the ambience? What, do, what does people do in this space and how does it reflect in sound? Then they came back and started to uh, collect, choose the best sound files that they wanted to work with. And then they started composing, putting all these sounds together into a wordless <laughs> uh, sort of soundscape, sound art uh, composition. Um, and we had a lot of talk about that it had to be, um, that it had to reflect a certain mood of this space and they couldn't use words and they couldn't use speak. So it had, they had to, uh, represent this space only in pure sounds that they had recorded themselves. So that was a lot of fun sort of uh, finding out how to compose a sort of their own little soundscape of, of all these different um, aspects of this square. What it's, what was it, what it's like to be this square. Um, then we had the question about composing the space of this Sulbia Square. And what you can see here is the blueprint of the square and all the little or, uh, yellow uh, colors it represent each a loudspeaker and a sound well. So um, how do we work with that? Well, we um, divided the, the square into different uh, sound zones and work with that sort of so uh, there was an area who went up straight to a little park with a lot of trees. So there we had this theme going on. And on the uh, left, on the right, this was close to the metro. So we had an area with all the metro soundscapes going on. And in the middle, we had the sounds from the square, main square itself. And then uh, the, the red thing was sort of sounds moving uh, from one side to the other. So that was a fun finding out how do we want to compose space? How do we actually create a new combined multi-layered soundscape that expresses the children's way of um, uh, understanding this space, this city that they live in. And then we made uh, a listening score because how do we represent this experience of sound and space? Um, we actually uh, divided the piece into three different parts uh, representing each class. So fifth grade, fifth A had the first part, and this is a representation of the part. We, you actually read the score from left to right, and left is where their part starts, their soundscape starts, and when the arrow uh, ends, this is where the sound, part, uh, this sound work ends. So then I drew all the little sound uh, pieces that they had composed 
uh, and then uh, sort of pointed down to what, which group had done which sound and we built this sort of construction together. So uh, at the premiere, uh, we had, had, we made a large score. Sorry, I can hear, I'm running late. Um, so this is the picture of it. And this is the premiere on the 5th of October, 2019. And then we sort of showed the whole, um, as we heard it, we had a kid sort of pointing to the score. So everybody had an idea of what we were listening to. And we had the mayor coming and somebody from the municipality and the director of the library. And it was a great, uh, great party and a great event. But this, is, uh, this was an example of how to, uh, to um, create sound awareness in a city and how to, to start talking and being creative about sound experience for children. Thank you. Thank you so much. And I think it's uh, nice to have another view. Um, I mean, usually you look at things or you walk around and so on. So this was a really interesting other perspective. So thank you very much. And the jury okay. thought that ex exactly the same thing. Uh, so now here, Bayou will present the next. Uh, this is our last um, presentation for today. Um, it's the special mention of the Audiovisual Media Award, and it went to United Kingdom, Homemade the Architecture by Emily Quinney. Uh, the jury's comment was 10 short, inspiring, do-it-yourself movies, introducing several aspects of architecture and sustainability in a playful way. Emily, would you kindly start your presentation, please? Sure. Hello, everybody. Um, I'm really glad to be here. It was really inspiring um, to see all those presentations. Um, so uh, I'm an architect and artist. I live in work in London. And um, um, I just wanted to say a bit about uh, my work. So uh, I've been uh, working on uh, the relationship between play and architecture uh, for 15 years. That's really a um, subject that I cherish and, and still work on. Um, I, I, early, I early had the strong desire to share architecture and the best way I found was through in a fun uh, and indirect way. Uh, so most of the time I'm using craft uh, activities, uh, conviviality and uh, game, uh, game, games. Um, I've done uh, uh, several different, um, I've worked in many different ways all around architecture. So I've been a model maker um, I, I, I've done residencies uh, to connect uh, local communities to their architecture surroundings. I do um, a lot of architecture workshops for museums and institutions for children or families. Um, I'm currently developing a large scale construction toy uh, for children to experiment with space. And um, uh, I've built a, a web platform called Ashihihi where you can uh, download uh, architecture activities for free. And sometimes I do <laughs> architecture projects. So I'm just going to present the, the series, the video series. Uh, it has been commissioned by the Pompidou Center in Paris for their, their web series called Mon Oeil. So it's a web series where we, with um, artist uh, uh, short, short videos. Um, and since I didn't see any architecture videos, I, I proposed them to enrich a bit the series. Um, so those 10 uh, episodes uh, are each on a particular contemporary uh, architecture building. Uh, they are all, all quite special. Um, I was free to choose them all. Uh, they're special either from their shape 
or from the materials which have been used to build them or for the construction mode. Um, and the challenge uh, I, I assigned myself with was to present those architectures uh, in the shape of a, a little model that uh, everyone could make uh, itself at home. So everything is made out of uh, materials you can find at home. And for each building, there are little people who are always the same shape but not size, and they, they give the scale of uh, each building. I'm going to try to share my screen. So that's, can you see my screen? Okay. Yes, yes. Yeah. So that's um, the first building I have chosen from uh, local architecture um, in Switzerland. It's uh, a chapel uh, made out of uh, wood. So loads of folds. Uh, uh, that's why I decided to work with paper um, uh, to obtain a, like a sort of origami building. Uh, and, and then you, you could see how, how you can hide uh, behind the folds. The second video was uh, the Labyrinth House uh, by André Bloch in Spain. So it's a very sculptural project. Uh, that's why I decided to show it as uh, uh, Play-Doh, white Play-Doh. And uh, the, the, the smooth curve suggested to, to be used as a, as a slide surfaces. Sorry? I think the pictures are a bit uh, down in the corner. Could you center them or something? I see what's happening. Oh, this is better. Now no. we can see the pictures. <laughs> Thank you. OK, sorry. So I just go back then. Yeah. Yeah, that's nicer. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. So the third building, of course, I, I did it. Uh, I had to include the Pompidou Center in that series, which was a uh, much complicated structure to build. Um, I've chosen to build it out of uh, paper mostly, some spaghetti and thread. Um, um, and so I, I cho I've chosen to show only the structure because that's the, the most amazing part of that uh, building. And uh, and highlight this uh, red uh, street, which is uh, hanging out of the facade and in the film is used as a racing track by the little persons. The fourth building is the Swiss Pavilion for the uh, exhibition, international exhibition uh, in 2000 in Hanover by uh, Peter Zumthor. So the, the aim of, the, of his building was to use wood, uh, but to be able to um, keep the wood intact uh, after. So there are no holes, no glue, um, nothing is damaged. It's just holding itself by the means of uh, massive uh, springs. So for this, I decided to use um, a building toy we have a lot at home, which are caplas and elastic bands. And uh, I recreated this uh, labyrinth shape uh, building uh, and uh, uh, give the, the experience that you would have visiting this actual uh, pavilion where uh, a music band was playing and you were invited to follow, follow it. So that's why what you can see during the video. Uh, the next one is um, a meditation space uh, designed by Tadawando for the UNESCO pavilion in Paris. So it's, uh, it's a very small building and the cylindric shape uh, gives a very uh, um, intense sound effect. Uh, which is great for meditation. Uh, I took the opportunity to show uh, in this video the how to work with concrete. So I decided to use um, 
a candle and uh, make a mold and cast the wax to see how how work uh, shape and contour shape. And during the video, um, you can take the opportunity to see the curves of the sun going in. Um, the sixth video was about the MUMO, uh, which is a mobile museum. So it's uh, three uh, containers which can go uh, flat when the truck moves from town to town. And when it stops, um, the building change shape to welcome uh, pupils and visitors. So I just use toys and a box and boxes um, to show how, how a building can uh, move and visit uh, many different landscapes in that case. The seven projects was a holiday house uh, built by uh, Edouard Francois and Duncan Lewis in France. So the walls of those houses are made out of trees, which I find very poetic. And so I decided to use seeds and to grow those walls. The, the next one was um, a Japanese building uh, designed by Tekuto architect. Um, uh, so it's a, this checkboard effect is made out of those uh, steel blocks, which are piled up together. Um, I decided to use sugar cubes, which are great to build models and um, give can give this, uh, when you move uh, along the facade, you can feel this uh, moiré effect. The light comes through the, the hood there. Um, this one are the paper log houses by Shigeru Ban, uh, which are structures made out of uh, cardboard, plywood, uh, beer crates, and um, uh, fabric, um, and they're meant to resist to earthquakes. Um, I decided to use one of my favorite materials, like biscuits and chocolate, and um, yeah, which are good to very solid actually. And then the last one um, is called the Truffle House, and it has been designed by Assemble Architects in Spain. Um, it has been it's concrete, which has been poured in by, by um, digging a hole in the soil, uh, uh, putting uh, hay balls in the middle, and the, the, the concrete has been poured between those two materials. Um, I've chosen to use sand for the soil, uh, frozen spinach blocks instead of the hay, ball, the hay, blo hay blocks, and poor plaster in between. In, for the real building, a cow was, did eat all the hay to empty yeah. the building at the end. I've chosen a snail. And yeah, but that's, that's all. Um, I don't know but, how much time I've, I've uh, left. You, you, you have had your 10 minutes. <laughs> it was, <laughs> it was very, very inspiring. And uh, you, I don't, uh, you can, uh, we have had questions in the chat here, how to reach and see your uh, videos. Uh, perhaps you can put a link uh, in the chat or something where people can find uh, your videos and, and watch them. Sure. So um, we, we would like to say congratulations to all winners and special mentions here in the fourth cycle of Golden Cubes Awards. And we are very proud to have been able to uh, have this uh, webinar. And uh, it will be, uh, we, we have uh, made, a, we are making a video from all uh, presentations here and it will be in our YouTube channel and we will announce it. We will send an email to you and we will announce it uh, 
on the Facebook uh, for architecture and children. So you can see when it's finished and published. And uh, uh, it, it will also in some way be, be broadcasted in uh, the Congress uh, in July. Uh, uh, we, ha we have a short uh, video uh, that we produced where all and all 71 entries are shown very quickly. Uh, perhaps I should start uh, the screen, sharing the screen and show what you say here, but shall we yes, shall please. take the video? We are okay. okay with the time and everything. Please go ahead. Yeah, I, um, let's see here. So I have to I have to share um, uh, I have to share the screen. Oh, sorry. Just <laughs> it's 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 so much technique. <laughs> share screen. So here and here. Share. So now we start the video. Uh, this video introduces you to our um, uh, 71 projects from 29 countries who have uh, participated in the international uh, jury after their been nomination um, from their um, countries. Those are the jury names. And this video is, uh, you can watch, watch it uh, in the YouTube channel now. So it's available if you want to see some Colombian or some other projects. Here is the award winner of institutions from Sweden and special mention from Mexico. So this will be a sort of repetition of the winners and special mentions. Yeah, but it's short. It, uh, it's uh, to the point. Yes. And you and can also find the video on our Facebook page and uh, on our website. Yes. And here is what you will, did not see, the Matt and Fiona. And now it's uh, uh, all other projects that were not uh, awarded. Um, yes, the, um, the, the jury found all projects very valuable and yes. uh, they have expressed that the, the work is incredible from all scale, from all sizes, from all over the world, yeah, but of course they had to choose. So it was it was hard job to do the jury work, I think. <laughs> So many projects to to study and try to understand. Yes, it uh, it lasted for about a month. Yes, <laughs> for the jury to study the projects and to read them and to watch uh, the if there are videos, if there are images, to read the, the poster, the reports that are written. And um, and then to elect uh, short lists and then to discuss the short list. It was uh, a top job. Thank you, uh, jury members. <laughs> we are still on institutions, you know, we had 27 institutions. <laughs> so that was the biggest group and it's a uh, very strong uh, competition between the different mu museums and universities and uh, uh, other sort of institutions.
Yes, the, this year the institutions were um, really many. Yeah. Uh, the value of uh, posting or um, uh, the value of uh, posting and sharing uh, those ideas together with the report that will be um, printed soon digitally is the cross culturation and the exchange of experiences uh, among countries. So more ideas for our uh, fifth cycle that will uh, shortly uh, come. Yeah, be announced, yes. So this was the Egyptian winner, and this is a special mention from Peru of schools. The floating community, as you perhaps remember. <laughs> uh, unfortunately, uh, the Congress will mostly be uh, online due to the COVID. Uh, it was already postponed from 2020 to 2021. Uh, it was supposed to be in Rio in, Janeiro, in Rio de Janeiro, but uh, it, it's mostly going to be uh, online. We will have an exhibition there and um, we will have uh, sessions uh, where um, many of the group members, um, okay, many of the group members will be presenting papers about architecture and children and uh, education and the built environment. Uh, it's the 27th uh, UIA Congress um, where architects from all over the world, it's called the, um, the Oscar of uh, architecture. It takes place every three years uh, and the UIA with all its programs and people affiliated um, prepare for it uh, for three years. But unfortunately, because of the pandemic, uh, we will not be able to, um, to, to be live and physically meet with everyone. Um, so um, it is going to be uh, online and uh, we will also post uh, when is the uh, sessions uh, so that if you can join, if you are interested, hopefully we see you all there. And then with the end of, uh, by the end of the Congress, we start a new cycle of the Golden Youth Awards. Uh, as you, most of you know, and for those who don't know, uh, you do not have to be a member state to arrange and organize a Golden Cubes in your country. Um, in 2023, um, any country who has already organized Golden Cubes, um, they select the winners and they send it to us, the UIA, and we will announce the dates and the, um, whatever it takes to, uh, for you to uh, join. And then we um, organize again an international jury and the international jury picks main categories, main, um, an award for each category, and maybe uh, some uh, special mentions. And hopefully in 2023, we all meet in, um, in Copenhagen in Denmark live. And, um, and we um, um, develop an, uh, a physical exhibition uh, for the works and a physical seminar for all uh, the winners like this one today, but in uh, physical format. So we can see one another and talk and socialize and go around together and hopefully. And have workshops perhaps yes. together with children. Yes. So around we, we can have many possibilities. So we really look forward for next, next the fifth, uh, uh, session of, of uh, Golden Cubes Awards and we will soon announce it and you can start planning what you would like to sub submit <laughs> and the plan for a national nomination process and so on. So we are now on the written media and then we are, have some audiovisual media also. There were several books we could not 
have the books in hand, but we could see the presentation of the books. But we thought the games were more interesting. <laughs> and so here is the audiovisual media. And uh, please follow our um, Facebook page and website so that uh, you can um, hands on what is happening in Rio and the preparations and uh, uh, everything that will uh, take place uh, during uh, the Congress uh, next month. Yeah. So now it's soon <laughs> complete. Uh, on our website and on our Facebook page, you'll also find uh, documents, you will find files, you will find videos, and definitely you can uh, download the, the charter that might be extremely helpful uh, so that you can talk to more uh, organizations in your uh, respectful countries. And you will find reports and you will find the examples of the Golden Cubes Awards of the last three cycles which can inspire you for more and more projects to come. Here you are. So uh, when, when this uh, video is uh, ended, we want you all to put on the cameras so we can make some uh, group pictures from, from this uh, uh, meeting uh, for, for sort of documentation. So now this is the end. So I stop sharing. And uh, so if everyone put on the cameras and we can have a view of the gallery view of everyone. Mariam, would you put on your camera as well? And we have some more people. So we can make a picture. We are many and that's a pride. Yeah. We are doing this. It's an important thing to do this. <laughs> Please say cheese, everyone. Say cheese. Oh, we have a lot of people who have not put on the camera. We have taken uh, several. Um... Uh, photos yeah for our meeting yeah and um, we are on time yeah so it's, um, a very good uh, thing um, we are really happy to meet you all today and we are really proud it's the um, um, the celebration of four years of hard work with the pandemic and everything and yet we succeeded the golden cubes awards um, in its fourth cycle was very inspiring many projects um, very fruitful comments from the jury and uh, um, I hope that um, much more is to come in the fifth cycle of the golden cubes uh, in two years it's not going to be in three years this time it's going to be in two years time so does, uh, for two minutes left, does anyone has, uh, have any comment or uh, suggestion or question or anything? You have to raise your hand or something. Yes. To, yes. To, to, so we see someone. Anyone here. has a, a comment or a question? So perhaps we can see. Oh, we had some comments in the chat. Uh, yeah. I don't know if it's possible to save the chat or... Uh, yes, it is saved. It's automatically saved. Okay, because uh, I think there was some, uh, some um, links and uh, there were also some very positive, nice comments that you would like to read when you made the different um, uh, 
comments. So we, I don't see any raised hands. <laughs> Maybe people are uh, already satisfied with what they have seen. Yeah. And yeah. very tired, <laughs> perhaps. <laughs> it was a long session, but and very intense. So, yeah. um, um, I hate to say goodbye, but maybe it's time. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Thank and, you. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you very much. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Chao. Que, que, estén, que estén pura vida. Chao. Pura vida. Pura vida. Chao. Bye. Bye, Alberto. <laughs> Bye, Christian. Yeah. To stop the recording, please. Okay.